You want to cut the power lines to your home. You want to generate your own electricity. Say you want to make a wind turbine to generate all the electricity needed for your house. To do this, you want to make the turbine's rotor as light as possible, have the least amount of aerodynamic drag, and have it rotate as fast as possible. The best rotor to do this, in theory, would have a single aerodynamic lifting blade. By contrast, a wind turbine rotor with 10 blades or more is generally considered a bad design to generate electricity with. A rotor with, say, 20 blades would be too heavy, have too much aerodynamic drag, and it would turn too slowly to generate much electricity. A single-bladed rotor can capture more wind energy and generate more electricity than a 10-bladed or a 20-bladed rotor can. In reality, modern wind turbines have two lifting blades for better balance, which reduces the wear and tear on each blade. How then does one explain the success of the American farm windmill, which had anywhere from 10 to 20 drag blades? Despite this, this windmill is the most commercially successful windmill in history. Since it was first invented 163 years ago, there have been six million sold in America and in other countries around the world. Six million sold. The farm windmill was invented by, by Daniel Holliday, an American, in 1854. Its primary task was to pump drinking water out of the ground for both people and livestock in, in remote rural areas. Holliday chose a rotor that had from 10 to 20 drag blades for his windmill for two reasons. First of all, Holliday wanted to, in theory, be able to sell his windmills to every farm and ranch in America. That meant many of his potential customers lived in low wind sites, so he needed to make a windmill that operated in low wind speeds. A 10 or more drag blade rotor can do that best. The American farm windmill was used to pump water out of the ground. Without going into a lot of details, this meant the windmills always raised the same amount of water each time the pump piston rose up. This meant the windmill had to have a lot of starting torque. A 10 or more drag blade rotor has good starting torque in low wind speeds. Despite its commercial success as a water pumper, the farm windmill is a bad design if you want it to generate all the electricity needed for your house. This is because it concentrates on capturing low wind speed energy. The farm windmill was designed to be most efficient in low wind speeds from 3 to 10 miles per hour. These wind speeds are the most common. The trouble is there is little energy in such low wind speeds. The result is the farm windmill would pump a small amount of water at a time, but do so on a more consistent daily basis. When the wind speed increases over 10 miles per hour, the efficiency of the farm windmills with their 10 or more drag blade rotors goes down. Its rotor will turn faster, but the percentage of wind energy capture decreases. By contrast, a modern wind turbine rotor using two aerodynamic lifting blades has its efficiency go up as the wind speed increases. It rotates faster, and its torque also goes up. It takes a lot of torque to turn the gears in a gearbox that makes an electrical generator spin fast. To generate a lot of electricity, you need to capture the greater energy in the higher wind speeds. Each time wind speed is doubled, you get eight times as much power out of your wind turbine. The power of the wind is cubed. For example, a rotor with an eight-foot diameter with two aerodynamic lifting blades in a five-mile-per-hour wind would generate 10 watts. The same rotor in a 20-mile-per-hour wind would generate 610 watts. Thus it generates 60 times more electricity than it would in a 5 mile per hour wind. By contrast, a farm windmill with the same diameter rotor with 10 or more drag blades could only generate 8 times more power in a 20 mile per hour wind. Thus a 2 bladed rotor is far superior to a 10 bladed rotor in generating the electricity for your home. The trouble with the American farm mill's rotor is that it turns too slowly. The result is, as the wind speed 
increases more and more of the wind energy flows around the rotor obstruction instead of flowing through it. Because of that, it can never capture enough energy in the higher winds necessary to generate a lot of electricity.